everyone. Time for lecture 42, changes to the other surface over time. I want to talk about how mountains are formed. So we were talking about this earlier, um, and I want to go into more, some more detail. So I, you might have thought about this already. This is a, a screenshot from a game called Minecraft. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. You guys are probably more obsessed with it than I am. Uh, have you ever asked yourself how they're actually formed? And if so, you might be asking, why wouldn't the world just be flat uh, all around us? Why wouldn't there be, why isn't, why isn't the world just completely flat with no hills, no mountains? Uh, for example, how did these mountains form? These are called the Taurus Mountains in Turkey. How did this mountain form, Mount Everest in Nepal? How did this mountain form called Matterhorn in Switzerland? Uh, I want to explore how these massive land formations are created. How are these mountains created? Okay, so let's go back and look at the Earth's crust. So we need to know these four layers. The Earth is made of four basic layers. So there's the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. Okay, so those four, and you got to know them. Uh, the crust is usually called, sometimes called the lithosphere. Uh, part of it's called the asthenosphere. Uh, we're always going to call it the crust. Okay, you and I live on the crust. We're just going to keep it nice and simple. So we need to look at tectonic plates. So the Earth's crust is made of these small sections called tectonic plates. All right, so here they are. Now these are the major tectonic plates and there's actually smaller tectonic plates inside of each of these, but these are the major ones. Now these black lines are called fault lines. We were looking at this last week. Uh, any border of, between two uh, tectonic plates is called a fault line. Okay, so that's these black lines right here. And uh, I'd like you to think of the Earth's tectonic plates as just massive puzzle pieces. The whole Earth is the whole Earth's crust is just a large amount of uh, large and small puzzle pieces called uh, tectonic plates. So I want to zoom in to the Earth's crust and take a look at it. So there's a lot of there's a lot of um, there's a lot of terms here: lithosphere, upper mantle, plastic asthenosphere. The ones I want you to know are these. So this first one's called continental crust. So that's just crust that's above the water, above the ocean. So you and me live on continental crust. It's they call it continental because that's what the continents are made out of. And then the oceanic crust is any crust that's below the ocean. Because there's still crust down there under the ocean. It's just underwater and you and I can't see it unless we dive down there and look at it. Okay, so the uppermost part of the mantle, or excuse me, of the crust is called the lithosphere. You may or may not see that on your exam, um, especially the one I don't, I, I won't write. Uh, Sage test sometimes asks you about the lithosphere. I always call it the crust. Okay. Um, it's good to know that the oceanic crust and the continental crust are all part of this thing called the lithosphere. So this is the important part. The crust is constantly moving. Notice that this this oceanic crust, this orange layer, is actually subducting down under this continental crust and it's actually moving to the left. Okay, and there's also some movement to the right. Uh, the, 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 for, there was no way for you to know this. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's constantly moving. The crust is constantly moving and it's called tectonic plate motion and that's what we're gonna look at. So, we were looking at this picture the other day here are uh, here are four different pieces, every, four tectonic plates, miniature subtectonic plates that are moving against each other. One's moving up and the other one's moving down. Another one's moving up and they're sliding across each other. This would be known as vertical sliding. Here's another uh, picture of some or a, a possible crust movement, and this the 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 uh, 
crust on the right is actually being subducted down under this under this crust. So these two are actually uh, colliding with each other, and this one is getting subducted or being pushed down by this one. You can also have uh, subduction this way. This is actually the same thing as this. There's movement of the of this crust going up, and there's movement of this crust going down. Okay. So we were looking at these types of boundaries last week. We you got to know each one of these. There's horizontal sliding, horizontal separation where they move apart from each other, vertical sliding which is just sliding up and down instead of side to side, and then there's horizontal collisions. Okay, and horizontal collisions is what we're going to be looking at again today. We looked at it yesterday or last week, and we want to look at it some more. <clears throat> So, this one's pretty easy, and this is a turn and talk last, last week. Which one of these do you think generates mountains? Which one of these do you think is going to generate a large hill, which is basically what a mountain is? It's going to be the horizontal collisions. Horizontal collisions of tectonic plates are the things that create mountains. Okay? So, how do mountains form? Mountains and mountain ranges form when layers of the Earth's crust collide in a horizontal collision. So that's what's really important right now. Okay, Know that the, uh, the product of horizontal collisions is, uh, horizontal collisions of tectonic plates is mountaintops. Okay? So these two, these two plates have been crushed together. One's being subducted and this other one is getting pushed along and as it gets pushed along, it gets folded upwards like this. Okay, this is the effect of a tectonic, uh, two tectonic plates going through a horizontal collision. Okay, so check this out. This is pretty cool. How do mountains form? We see them in just a moment of time, but they form over millions of years. Mountain belts extend for hundreds, even thousands of kilometers, and their structures penetrate deep into the earth. So their size and age make their formation difficult to understand. French geologist Jacques Malavier builds sand models that mimic the formation of mountain belts and allow scientists to study this complex process. In order for an experiment that runs for only a few minutes but represents natural phenomena that happen over many tens of millions of years, we have to choose a material whose deformation behavior does not depend on time. Sand is a very good material for simulating rock deformation. In the experiment, the different stratigraphic layers which represent the sediments and the continental crust have different mechanical properties. We mix the sand grains with a finer powder, which increases the sand's resistance to deformation. Thus, we have heterogeneous material made up of more resistant layers and less resistant layers. Mountain belts are created when continents collide. In this experiment, we see two continents separated by an ocean. Okay, so what we're going to see is horizontal collision. Two plates are going to collide together. Two pieces of continental crust are going to smash together. And this is actually how the Himalayan mountains were formed. India used to be an island, and then it smashed up against, uh, it smashed up against uh, the continent of Asia, and it's been doing so for hundreds of millions of years to form the massive mountain tops of Mount Everest. Now watch what happens as the plates converge. As one plate subducts or dives beneath the other, the ocean basin closes. The continental crust, which is lighter than oceanic crust, cannot be subducted. Instead, as the continents collide, the crust thickens and is forced up. Note how the sand is folded and faulted. We see similar structures in the rocks in mountains. One important factor not accounted for in this model is erosion. 
erosion exposes the deformed rocks that were once deeply buried in the mountain belt. The green sand represents the rocks of the ocean basin. Note that it's been trapped between the two continents, marking their original boundary. These two we see in mountain belts. It's very difficult to understand the deep structure of a mountain belt by direct observation. The sand model allows us to compress time and space and simulates the internal structure of mountains. Cool. Take your exit ticket. I'll see you tomorrow.